So we're going to be approaching a corner. This is off of our race start, assuming that we are just in a race for the first time. As we're going into a corner here, first corner might have a long braking zone, might have a short braking zone, doesn't matter. The thing that we want to remember about approaching the braking zone, it's the first of the six or seven phases of the corner that we're going to have to think about. And yes, there is that many steps. It's okay, you'll be fine. We're going to start putting in our braking pressure. Now, when we put in our brake pressure, what's going to happen on an advanced level is a lot of the weight of the car is going to move forward and the nose is going to dip down. And the back of the car, assuming this is the direction of the racetrack, is going to come up as the nose dips like so. What that means is more weight and pressure is being put on the front tires than the rear. So if we start moving the steering wheel while braking, bad juju starts to happen and the car wants to spin or loop itself. So make sure the steering wheel is straight. We're ready to go. We begin braking in a straight line. We put our braking force in smoothly but firmly. So we ramp it up quickly. We don't step on it super hard. We just kind of down, ease it in in about half a second or so. Nice smooth, firm movement. We're going to hold it. And then as we hear the engine RPM begin to come down, and we know it's come down enough, we want to put the clutch in and select our next gear. Ideally, we're only going to be changing one or two gear ratios for every corner. If it's a very long braking zone, maybe more. So we get our braking pressure in. We slow down, then we do our gear change. So brake, hold, change. Then we let the clutch out and let the car start coasting before we begin turning into the corner now. We're going to want to smoothly, slowly release the brakes and then begin turning the steering wheel into the corner. It's important to do that after our gear change because we want the car settled down forward to back before we start moving it side to side. Okay, so brake wait to slow down, change gear, smoothly release brake, then we start slowly serving the car in side to side. There's going to be a more specific drill on this later, but for right now, if you're in a normal sports car, if you're in a fast corner that's fifth or sixth gear, very high speed, try not to turn the steering wheel more than about 45 degrees or so, okay? About this much. So that you could see it from the backside, that's about what 45 degrees looks like. Okay, if we're in a third or a fourth gear, kind of medium to high speed corner, we're gonna start be turning this wheel maybe about to 90 degrees or so, okay? just about to 90. And when we're on a really slow corner, like a first or second gear corner, we can use 90, but then we might be able to turn a little bit more to kind of like we're at, you know, the 135, 145 range. If it's a very slow first gear corner, like on a skid pad and autocross or that nasty turn one at Monza that everybody hates so much or a very tight hairpin, we might be able to get the steering wheel over to 180, but you are not driving a car through a parking lot at five miles an hour. An important thing to remember about driving theory is as the speed comes up, the amount of inputs we can put into the car, the amount we can turn the controls, press the throttle, press the brake, change gears comes down. The faster we're going, the more gentle we have to drive the car. So we're coming down in this first corner here, and we're going to turn that steering wheel into our ideal angle as we come in. Good. Now we're rolling down in and through the corner. Now that we can see as we draw a straight line, either between the bright tape on the center of the steering wheel or with our eyes, we want to look to the outside of the corner as we turn in from all the way near the track edge all the way through and make the straightest line through here as possible with our eyes because the car is going to follow where our eyes are going. So now that we're done braking, we've changed gear, we've started to come off the brakes and we're turning in, we're looking all the way through the corner. Just imagine that there's an invisible cone or marker about halfway through the corner. That's called the apex or the clipping point. We want to come all the way down in and hit that. And on a lot of corners, it's about 60 to 70% of the way through. But that for now, imagine it's about 50% of the way through if it makes it easier for you. So we're going to come down, try to hit that with the inner front corner of the tire. And when we hit that, then we're going to slowly start squeezing down the throttle and as we're squeezing the throttle, we're going to be slowly also releasing the steering wheel. Imagine that there's a string tied between the steering wheel and the top of your throttle pedal. So when the pedal's up, the string is loose and you can turn the wheel and the string is attached to the bottom so it pulls the pedal up. So as you're squeezing down, the, the then starts pulling the steering wheel back straight. So as we're accelerating out, we're slowly coming off of the steering angle as we're coming on in the next straightaway in order to let the car free out and come towards the outside of the track. So we have have braked, changed gear, come off, 
turned in, let the car ease and roll down into that apex or clipping point. And now we're squeezing the throttle and letting it out. Now, as we're exiting this corner, the important thing to be is just kind of like how when we were in the braking zone, we were looking where to turn in. And then we, when we were turning in, we were looking all the way through the corner to the apex. We want to be that one step ahead of the car. So as we exit that corner, we're going to be looking all the way down the next straightaway for our braking and turn in point for the next one. You always want to make sure that you're one or two steps ahead of the car because if you're behind the car, the race car actually moves faster than the human brain evolved to be able to hand wheel, right? It works at 10, 15 miles an hour, maybe, maximum. When you're in a race car, even a slow race car, you're always going to be out driving the human brain. That's why we want you to start in a nice slow car, focus on these six fundamental steps. Brake, change, off, in, apex, power, out. Come in nice and smooth, six or seven phases, and say that in your brain. Break, change, off, in, power, out. If you can do that every time, even as a complete beginner, you should be able to get around the track safely and not hurt yourself. As always, I'm what you call a professional. Don't try this at home, and I hope that you have fun and stay safe if you do.